Hi folks, Haz here from Shield K9. Uh, I just wanted to kind of expand a little bit on a previous topic um, that I uh, shot a video on, and that was selecting um, a dog for personal protection work. And uh, in the previous video, I kind of talked a little bit about uh, breed selection and uh, the three breeds that we think are the best for this type of work, and those were the German Shepherd, the Dutch Shepherd, and the Belgian Malinois. So let's assume at this point that you've already settled on a breed of dog that you want, even if it's an off-breed. Now it's time to actually select an individual puppy, or in some cases an adult. And at, at this point, it's very, very important that you select, uh, if you're selecting a puppy anyways, um, a dog that comes from a very strong working bloodline. And what I mean by working is not, you know, he has some obedient, the, the parents have some obedience titles or canine good citizen or any of that other nonsense, right? That's all fun stuff. It doesn't really mean anything about the actual temperament of your dog or, or the dog that has the title. What I'm talking about is can the parents actually work? And if so if the breeder says they can work, is there video or, you know, can you actually go and see the dogs work? And by work, I mean protection work, okay? So this is a, this is, this video is about selecting a dog for personal protection work. So you want to see the parents performing in that function, okay? So you want to see dogs that can handle pressure, that can handle threat, that, that are courageous, that are, that, that, that have good drive, um, that are very confident, that, that, you know, um, uh, that, that have excellent grips um, you know you want to see uh, these qualities in the parents of the the puppy that you're selecting and, th and this will kind of set you up for you know uh, a greater likelihood of success in the in in the puppy that you uh, end up selecting so if I, I can't say this enough if the breeder has a lot of really cool stories about you know oh he was a police canine talking about the parents of the dog a police canine and this and that and everything else if you can't see it with your own eyes or, or there isn't documentary evidence of it move on to somebody who has those things because there are a lot of shysters out there guys there are a lot of shysters out there that really don't know what they're doing uh, that have never worked their own dogs um, you know they'll buy dogs with titles and, and breed them but yet they really don't even know what they're looking at uh, and, and you know this is kind of a whole different topic but just because your dog has a sport title doesn't mean the dog is breed worthy and, and it doesn't mean that the dog is actually good I've seen a lot of really nervy dogs that you know you couldn't pay me to feed uh, with sport titles and, and protection sport titles so that in and of itself doesn't mean anything so when you are selecting a puppy it is so important it is so so important that you see uh, you know parents and, and if possible even grandparents um, you know that, that that have a strong working ability okay and again you're looking for confident dogs you're looking for dogs with high drive you're looking you're looking at dogs that that, that are courageous and, and that show excellent uh, uh, intensity in their protection work all right so if you've settled on a breeder you, you believe that you've found a breeder that has breeding stock that, that you want a puppy out of, when you go to select your puppy, you really need to make sure that that puppy is, is, is really a good candidate for, for the type of work you want to do. Just because the parents are awesome does not mean the puppies will be awesome. Okay, so get that into your head. I don't care what the pedigree on the parents is. Now we've got puppies on the ground. We need to look at the puppies in and of themselves, right? So once you get once you go to pick up your puppy at eight, nine weeks old, whatever it is that you've agreed upon with the breeder, you want to get that puppy away from the rest of the litter. You want to look at that puppy's temperament, that, that puppy's uh, genetic drive, that puppy's confidence. If you see a puppy that's shy, uh, if you see a puppy that, that shows any kind of insecurity or hesitant um, or, or hesitates a lot, then in, in my advice would be to, to give that puppy back to the breeder and if possible, get another puppy or, or um, wait till another breeding, okay? Because you know what? That's a 10 to 12 year investment when you take that puppy home. And you, you don't wanna be investing your time in a wrong dog if you're selecting a dog for work, okay? So uh, again, you're looking for really confident, outgoing pup, 
Um, you know, preferably if he if he has drive to grab things like a rag or or you know a little tug, he'll grab that and and tug on it and want to possess it. Those are all good traits to to look for in a personal protection dog. But the most important thing is confidence and nerve, right? At the end of the day, uh, you know, we can train we can train a, a dog for protection work as long as he has uh, good genetic confidence, right? Good nerve, we call it. Uh, you know, things does things don't phase him. People don't phase him. Other dogs don't phase him. He's very confident in himself. These, this is the most important trait for a for a protection dog. Now let's talk about if you're if you're looking at a young adult or an adult dog for personal protection work. At this point, it doesn't really matter what the dog's uh, heritage is. What it ma what matters is is what the dog in front of you is offering. So if the dog has training, then pretty much it's an open and shut case. You want to be seeing a dog uh, with 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 high level of intensity in their in their work. You want to see a dog that's confident, that owns his or her space. Um, you know that doesn't again show any kind of insecurity or fear. You want to see a dog that uh, engages the decoy in, a, in an intense and confident manner. Uh, you want to see a dog with good grips, and by good grips I mean not frontal bites, full deep confident biting of the decoy, right? The grips will tell you a lot about the quality of the dog. A lot of people see a dog grabs on with his front teeth and he thrashes, and he's just holding on with his front teeth like this, okay? This is not a confident dog. This is a dog that the decoy gives him one good smack, he's, he's going to be heading for the hills, okay, in most cases. Uh, or it's a dog that just has not been trained at all, but in most cases it's a, it's a dog that has confidence issues. When you have a dog that is confident, he's going to be grabbing the decoy full firm and, uh, you know, he's going to either want to fight the decoy as it pull him down to the ground, or you'll see a lot of, a lot of dogs will like to thrash or torque the decoy once they've grabbed him. The grips tell you a lot about the dog. So if you're seeing the dog do protection work, you want to see good, strong grips. Now, some dogs are a little chewy. For me, I don't like it that much, but it, again, it's not a huge thing as long as the dog shows confidence. And you want to see not the decoy just acting like a, a rag doll, but you want to see the decoy put some really strong pressure on the dog while he's biting him. So I want. I want to see the decoy screaming at the dog. I want to see the decoy hitting the dog, kicking the dog. Not hard enough to injure the dog, but enough that the dog kind of really believes that, that he's in a real fight here. You'll see a lot of decoys, they just, you know, they make it like a big game of tug. Like, oh, you got me. Here we go. I'm just going to tug back and forth. And a lot of people are very impressed by this because they don't really know what they're looking at. I want to see a decoy really challenge the dog. I want to see him get in there. You know, the dog gets his grip, and then I want to see the decoy put a ton of pressure on that dog and make that dog really believe that, you know, he's in a fight. And then you're going to really see what the dog is. Because ah! Good. Good. Good boy. Good. 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 Because again, if you're looking for a dog for personal protection or guard type work, you want a strong dog. You want a dog that, that is confident and it's gonna back you up and it's gonna give you those critical seconds to either, you know, get away uh, or call the police, right? You want a dog that can take care of himself and if your dog can't handle pressure, then, you know, you're, you're, you're gonna be, you know, if, if you ever need to call upon that dog, you know, you're, you're really gonna find out, you know, how important it is to have a dog that, that has the genetic ability to handle pressure and, and that has a genetic confidence to bring the fight to the, to the man. So, once you, if you're looking at a dog that is untrained um, and, and you want to bring him in for personal protection type work, if, if you're not, if you don't really know what you're doing, this is more difficult. Um, again, my greatest suggestion, if the dog, uh, if, if you can get the dog away from his familiar environment, just kind of walk him around, you want to look at a dog, again, that's confident, right? Not a dog that's going off on everybody and everything that he sees. That's not a confident dog in most cases. In most cases, that's a dog that's actually really insecure and, uh, you know, he's bluffing in order to try and drive all the perceived threats away. Yeah. You don't want a dog that's hackling up and boo, 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 and he's barking all the time and backing up and all that type of stuff. That's insecurity. That's fear-based behavior. That's not what you want out of a protection dog.
okay? So you wanna look for a really confident, outgoing dog. He doesn't have to be social, but just confident, right? There's a lot of dogs that are super aloof. They just pretend like you don't even exist, but they know you're there, right? That's fine as well. We just don't want any kind of fearful type behavior. If the dog has drive for a tug, right, for a rag, again, these are all good things. These aren't bad things. If he's willing to, you know, fight you for a tug and stuff like that, these are all good genetic traits that we can mold into a good protection dog. So again, to reiterate, once you've selected your breed, it is really important to select the correct individual within that breed. And if it's a puppy, it's, it's important to select a dog that comes from a good working heritage, from parents that you can actually see work and that can show good strong work and good strong temperaments, right? And, and once you go to get the individual puppy, you want the puppy to, 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 to be outgoing and confident and, and, and to be, you know, um, you know, to have some drive, that's ideal as well. Uh, if you're looking at an individual, an adult, you're looking, you want to look at a dog that, that is confident and that is very strong in his protection work if he has training and if he doesn't, just the confidence and the drive in and of itself. So again, if you're not really familiar with what you're looking at, of course, this is going to be more difficult for you, which is why it's always best to kind of go through professionals if you want to, if you're actually serious about getting a dog for personal protection type work.